So let's keep things short. So you probably heard this a thousand times by a thousand people. So let me just get it out the way right now. Go ahead, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Hey, might as well add a like right there if you enjoyed it even more. Woo! Hey, might as well drop a comment, share your opinion. And now that I got that out of the way, let me ask you this question. Do you really think you know the character of Gojo Satoru? I'm gonna go ahead and give you a moment to think about that. All right, moment's gone. So despite being the JJK's community's MC, Gojo Satoru is the most misunderstood character in the entire series, in my opinion, of course. And it comes from chapter 236, Heading South. As he's telling his ghost best friend, Geto Suguru, about his fight with Sukuna on how he wouldn't have been able to beat him even if he didn't have Megami's body. I added that just to be petty because, you know. He's dead, and he's not going back. But during this conversation, Gojo, who's also a specter at this point, remember that, started to be more vulnerable than his usual cocky and self-centered self by sharing with Suguru that he emphasizes and relates with Sukuna after their squabble of the century. It's the best fight in the series by far. I don't care what nobody tells me about being the strongest and what unfortunately comes with that title. As they're having their conversation, there's this one line that Gojo says that will stick with you. You can make a flower bloom, you can admire it, but you can't tell that flower, I want you to understand me. Come on, that's a bar right there. See, you can take that analogy in a multitude of ways. He could be talking about his students in this light or his peers. Me personally, I like to see it as both, the former and the latter, because he knows what it means to be alone and to be glorified by all, but yet still wanted to be understood by those he deems close to him. And confirming that is when he told Ghetto that he would have have been completely satisfied if he was alongside one of the many that patted him on his back that sent him on his way to challenge Ryomi Sukuna to that epic battle. I will say it again and I'll say it once more. That was the best fight in the series. No one can challenge me on that shit. Furthermore, confirming the fact that he was seen in a different light than what he was or what he wanted to be seen as when Nanami and you entered the conversation. With Nanami stating that he was only interested in gaining more power in jujitsu rather than having something to protect while only using it for his own personal gain and satisfying himself and with Hybara actually agreeing with Nanami here it shows that they just don't get it due to them not understanding what comes with that title of being considered one of the strongest on the planet and with Suguru hearing Gojo out about how he felt after the battle while also siding with you and Nanami shows that he was the bridge that he needed in his life to help people have a better understanding of him a little bit more and now that he's gone dead buried it's like he's just on this mountaintop alone once again after that fight well honestly it really doesn't matter well they're both dead now it looks like they're best friends in the spilled realm so hey good on them additionally you could say the reason he lost to sakuna was the fact that he wasn't selfish enough compared to the likes of sakuna because sakuna literally stole his protege's body like, come on, that's crazy. And he did that just to beat this man. It's not confirmed, but Sukuna had a formulaic plan in defeating Gojo from the start. He told that man when he was in Yuji's body, the first thing I'm going to do when I, once I take over this brat's body is kill you. <laughs> He didn't take over Yuji's body, of course. He took over the body that had more potential than Yuji. And I gotta say, that was the right move because without Maharaga, he would have been cooked. That's just in my opinion because Gojo was giving him those hands. And back when I said, even though, and back when I said where Gojo said, even though if he didn't have Megami's body, he still would have lost. I was still with a loss and i gotta say he's still correct there as well because the homeboy would have found a way to kill that man he was making binding vows like it was nothing he did not care he wanted the win by any means necessary and gojo knew that that's why he said there was no way he could have beaten him he wasn't selfish enough <laughs> all i gotta say is right now that people think that this man is as selfish as it's come i don't believe that at all he's a teacher I really think teachers are the most the most selfless people on this world. You gotta go in every single morning for the rest of your life teaching ungrateful and unruly kids on how to live life. Oh my god, those people are selfless. I don't care what nobody tells you. Respect your teachers. I don't care who, how old you are. Respect them. But anyway, you definitely should see Gojo Satru as one of the most misunderstood characters in the story.